And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. When I first saw Batu, Storm of the Horse Lords, I was very impressed. I mean, look at the size of this box. It's a giant box, and inside is a giant game. This is just one-fourth of the board, and there was a big bag of plastic pieces and cards. And the board itself is entertaining because it's made up of tiles. You start with not knowing what they are, and then eventually you turn them over and you form a city. And as players go, they're conquering different parts of the city. It's a very, very light, 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 light war game. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on. Basic rolling of dice to attack. Some event cards or loot cards can be played to give players advantages and such. But And there may be some strategy in where you go. But overall, lots of luck in what tiles you found, luck in combat. But it, it, it's fun. One of my biggest regrets, actually, was that it only played with four players. It's an excellent game for me to take to my, my youth group or my, my board game club. And so when I heard about the expansion, The Walls of Tarsos, I was excited. Yay, finally a fifth player, a sixth player. Well, actually, that's not what the expansion adds. This is a good expansion if you already love the game and you just want a little bit more. It doesn't really add a lot. Um, I almost want to say that it's kind of like, why wasn't this in the original game? Maybe for cost's sake, I don't really see a need to run out and get this expansion because as interesting as the original game was, what does this really add to it? Well, let me tell you what it adds, then you decide whether that's worth it or not. First of all, that's a whole pile of new tiles. Okay, some of them have special abilities that weren't from the original game. Let's see, we'll talk about some of these abilities. This one here, for example, if you look at the little, has some extra victory points there. If you have the matching tile, you then get five extra victory points. Here, this one has a spyglass on it. You can look at any tile on the board. Many of the tiles, like this one here, the Hall of Gladiators, which is pretty neat, when you attack, you automatically lose a soldier. Okay, well, fortunately, the back of the rules have a listing of all these special abilities and that's useful because you'll be looking at them a lot because you'll run across these special abilities very rarely. So there's some new tiles. The rules mention how to set the game up so that you have a fair smattering of all the different size tiles in the game and I guess it adds more variety to the game overall but nothing really groundbreaking here but more variety. More interesting than that is as the, if you look at the game right now the walls are already pre-printed on the game. Well, this expansion comes with wall pieces, and these wall pieces are based on, placed on the same shapes on the wall, and basically they just make it so that you don't know exactly what kind of wall you're attacking. You know, maybe you'll get a normal gate like this, or maybe a really strong wall section like this, and there's even some with a, a secret entrance right here. Yay, you got lucky with this wall. You can just go in for free. That's not bad. It almost should have been part of the original game. I mean, why have the wall printed on the board when you can just have... Pieces of the wall just like every other piece. So, you know, nothing major and interesting, but it didn't really change the game that much, except in the example of the secret wall space, give whoever gets that a huge advantage. The game also includes some more cards. There's more loot cards. There's more event cards. There's a new kind of loot card, and these are called reaction cards. These cards can be played in reaction to someone else. For example, this one, Scavengers, says play before another player draws loot cards after capturing a city tile. That player must give you one of the loot cards he or she draws before looking at them. Well, that's fun. Uh, but this one I really enjoy. My favorite card of the set is a good day to die. Play when another player retreats from battle. That player cannot retreat, but they get this card that's worth two points. So if you really want to destroy someone's army, you can do so. Hey, you give them two points, though. It's all good all around, but it's sometimes it's fun when there's someone's trying to get out of there. No, we're fighting to the bitter end. I like that card a lot. Uh, there's one event, or actually there's two event cards that bring a new neutral army into play, basically that ra ravages across the board. Um, so these pieces are also included with the game. Um, it's almost too powerful, really. I mean, you can get it, and you can just wreak havoc in everyone else's properties except your own. And, okay, I mean, the game's already light, so I guess it doesn't really matter that th we add some more unbalanced cards to the game. But that's basically it. A short review for a short expansion. I don't think it's really necessary to go out and buy it. If you like the game and you really want more of it, this will give you more, but you'll play it and you don't see any difference. When I teach people the game now, I just add the expansion in and don't even tell them that there is such a thing as an expansion. They would never know. It doesn't raise the complexity level. It doesn't give you many more different strategy options. It just adds a little more. And I'm not sure a little more is worth a lot more price. Thanks for joining us today. 
For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.